Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to MOOC NPTEL course on developing soft skills and personality. I am Ravichandran from IIT Kanpur. So, I am the course instructor for you and we are going to conclude the first week's lesson with this. We are on module 6 of the first week and this is the lecture 6 for the course. In this module, I am going to introduce two new concepts about motivation, one need achievement right, the other one about spiritual intelligence. Now, before I start, again like last lecture, I just want to give you the highlights very quickly. What did we do in the last lecture? I was focusing particularly about developing your potentiality, enhancing your uniqueness and then taking it towards excellence. I started defining excellence. Excellence is the outstanding feature in which you try to show that you are possessing very good qualities of high caliber, of higher standard. Now, in that context, I asked you whether you would rate yourself as excellent or very good, good or just poor or average, a very honest uh, rating of yourself. And I also suggested that you ask somebody to rate you, rate you as a person at the same time rate some of your unique potentialities where you actually excel. How do people see you in those qualities? Okay. Now, I assume that you have done the exercise and then you have identified something that is so unique in you, your unique potential. And once you have done that, I suggested that you should be able to pursue excellence by strengthening the inner core. In terms of inner core, I was just identifying features which if you develop, it can strengthen your inner core and those features, if you have, you need to eliminate because they will keep on weakening your inner core. Basically, I put uh, on one side the law, the law of abundance, on the other side, I was just talking about the poverty of mind, control governed by fear and this side, you make all decisions based on courage, conviction, faith, etc. And then the choices that you make out of fear followed by regret on this side that is going to weaken your inner core and on this side the ones that are made out of courage and which will definitely end in terms of fulfillment. Okay. After that I was also talking to you about processing excellence. How do you put that into action? How do you process excellence? The first part is you need to make radical change, that is you need to make one shift, one paradigm shift in the way you think, in the way you function by starting a challenging job, by trying to do something which you have not done so far. Having started that, you need to make constant improvement. Okay. So, radical change and constant improvement, both are required to reach towards excellence. Now, once you have started and then going towards in your goal, you need to move from one vision and then one mission and then you need to enhance, you need to have more visions and missions to reach the so called self actualized stage by which I concluded the lecture and then I am going to continue with that stage. Now, self actualization according to Abraham Maslow is supposed to be the highest level of growth need. Mind you, we have basic needs and then growth needs. Most of us stop with basic needs, but then some of us do reach the growth need. And then when you talk about growth need, most of the motivations are intrinsic, they are inner. When you talk about basic needs, safety needs, most of the motivations are coming from outside, external. I will keep talking about this later also, but keep in mind that there is this intrinsic inner one which I am trying to focus and that is why I said try to strengthen your inner core. Now, self actualization is actually referring to actualization of one's potential, uniqueness and seeking self fulfillment. It was interesting to note that Maslow was saying that not all people are able to achieve this, but the point 
by which I was concluding the last lecture was that although few people achieve self-actualization fully, it is important to aspire for it as the unrealized and unactualized people remain unhappy throughout their lives. If you do not actualize according to Maslow, you will be remaining unhappy throughout your life and you will live a life of regret. Now, you have to make a choice here, nobody wants to live that kind of life, everybody can uh, try to enhance their potentiality, reach excellence, reach towards self actualization. Now, in this lecture, let us look at another concept introduced by David McClelland in the book The Achieving Society. But this is a kind of extract that he took from Abraham Maslow. Now, instead of talking them at five stages, he condensed, he crystallized the needs into three needs. It is also called as three need theory. And then he said that people are constantly driven by three basic needs. Either uh, it is dominant in some or it is not that dominant, but you see at least one or two of these drives. Now, what are those three drives? First, he said that people have this drive for power, motivation for power, motivation for affiliation and at the same time he said that people have this need for achievement, motivation for achievement. So, his theory is uh, considered three need theory. So, achievement motivation is the one that I want to focus which is also uh, very nicely nicknamed and called as NH trite, need achievement trite is NH trite. The other two are uh, based on authority power motivation abbreviated as NPOW and then affiliation motivation is N affiliate. But for our uh, course, particularly in terms of developing your personality, although we need to think about affiliation and power, which Maslow has kept it somewhere at the middle. Affiliation is your uh, sense of belonging with the group that affects you emotionally. Okay, you want to belong and then you want to feel uh, that you are loved and then you also want to love someone, you want to express your feelings that is affiliation. The other one power. So, which Maslow was not highlighting that much, but then David McClelland was saying that some people are driven by power. Now, power can be used in both ways, either you can use power to do good things for others or you can use power to influence, control, even threaten, dominate people. But in terms of self-fulfillment, self-actualization, I want you to focus on the need achievement right. What is it? What is need achievement? Need achievement is the desire to do something better. It is uh, taking from self actualization. This is the desire to do something better, to solve problems or to master complex, very complex tasks. So, when you have a need achievement right, you actually want to master not simple problems, but want to solve something which is very complex and then you derive self-fulfillment out of it. Now, more about need achievement right and what can you do about it? Can you realize that you have this need achievement? And if you realize, how do you identify that you have those ones? And in case you do not have, what are the traits by which you can develop? How can, how can you synchronize with the need achievement right? Now, it is generally defined as a desire to do well for the sake of an inner feeling of personal accomplishment, a desire or a need to do well, not for monetary benefits, but for the sake of an inner feeling of personal accomplishment, a general desire to excel, just it is just a need to excel. It is not like uh, uh, any other uh, need like hunger and then other emotional need, but there is a need he says that in every human being that makes the person to feel that he or she should excel and that is need achievement right. To achieve a goal in relation to a set of standards, you reach a level and then you set high standards for yourself 
and then you want to achieve your goals based on those standards, not on the substandards set by some other people, but on your own high standards set by you. So, you are not validated, you are not recognized by other people on their terms, but then you validate yourself. That is the level in which you operate under need achievement. Now, what are other qualities that distinguishes this person who has this need achievement right? Think about them, ask yourself, do you have the rights? If you do not have, can you try to introspect, can you try to reach within, can you try to pull it out? You are like an iceberg and you will know that what is shown by you in terms of behavior is coming from your own inner core, okay, the beliefs that you have inside. And within the beliefs, can you go inside and then can you dig out your thoughts and see whether you have these rights? If you do not have, could you make honest attempt to try to develop these rights? And you should know that it is possible because he says that it is there in every person. It is only that it is dormant in some and then people do not want to actually self actualize to reach this level. What are some qualities? Let us take a quick look. Strong need to set and accomplish challenging goals. They are not satisfied by normal goals, but they want to set challenging goals. They are willing to take calculated risks. They are not afraid of taking risks, but they are very wise people and smart and they take calculated risks. They are optimistic. And they try to seek feedback for constant improvement. They are not afraid by criticisms. If people give it, they take it and then they develop further. Any kind of feedback is not seen as a threatening thing, but it is seen as a kind of positive way to develop oneself further. They always find ways for doing things better. Even if uh, you say that uh, this standard is enough, they would like to try to reach a better level. If they reached one level higher, they would like to go better again. The other interesting feature about uh, persons who have NH right is similar to those persons who have actually self-actualized themselves. These people can work alone, they are independent. So, uh, they, are, they are not that dependent, okay. they, are, they are not secure, they are not feeling insecure, they are not scared of working alone. Achievement is more important than material or financial reward. So, they are not bothered by external rewards such as like price or money or any kind of material reward is not going to influence them. But the achievement as such that I set a standard, I try to accomplish that goal according to that standard and I achieved it. So, that feeling it gives them greater personal satisfaction than any other recognition by any other human being or any any anything else on the universe. It is important to them that they should feel personal satisfaction within. These are the people who are intrinsically motivated. As you grow, as you grow higher, you need to focus more on these inner traits because Currently, most of you may be motivated by the external uh, factors of motivation such as getting first prize in a competition, reaching the topmost level so that you get a gold medal, you get a prize, that is fine. Okay. But why are you doing that? That is just to see your value and that is just for your personal satisfaction if you do, you are trying to inculcate that NH trait in you. Uh, as I said, these people maintain very high standards and then their persistence level is very high. They can persist for longer. So, if everybody thinks that they would have ended themselves, but then they wait longer, they work longer, they persist longer and they take responsibility for their own actions. If something goes wrong, they will not blame somebody else, they will not blame their parents, they will not blame their boss, they will not blame circumstance, they will not blame anything. They will only think that I should work harder, I should do much more efforts. Okay. And finally, as I said, they are very intrinsically motivated. Now, coming to the concluding thought for this week and then a kind of uh, core thinking that I want you to have throughout this course on uh, soft skills and developing your personality, 
the soft skills as I said are imbibed and then they go hand in hand as you start developing your personality. They come to you in a sense very spontaneously, automatically if you are able to build up this inner core. So, I am not using the approach in which you try to imitate somebody and then follow uh, what somebody else is doing, but then you try to bring out within you and then bring out your natural spontaneous self. Now, you will be able to do that if you realize that I am trying to take you from the normal conception of the intelligent level to the emotional and spiritual level. So, uh, in terms of general thinking, people initially thought that it is the physical might that is important. So, they put lot of emphasis on the physical quotient P Q and then came a time and uh, in the 60s or so people started saying that ok, no, no, it is not this one, but it is the intelligent quotient. Now, it was dominating for a long time and then after that uh, uh, with uh, Daniel Goldman's book on emotional intelligence, it was a breakthrough and then he made it a point by saying that it is not your intelligence that will make you follow up, you will reach a position, but then if you want to continue with that, if you want to sustain and grow further, it is not intelligence that is going to make you continue further, you need emotional intelligence. And then came Dana Johar and others who introduced the term spiritual intelligence and they said that one more step away from emotional intelligence, it is not just feeling, but it is also trying to connect with the universe from your inner core, the spirit, the spiritual part of it. And if you are able to do that, develop that inner connectedness, use your wisdom, use your compassion to connect to people, they say that that is spiritual quotient and that is on the top. Now, just for the sake of convenience, I have tried to show you that physical quotient is at the bottom and then comes intelligent quotient and then emotional quotient and uh, on the top you have spiritual quotient, bottom you have physical quotient. But actually, the correct way to visualize that is spiritual quotient is at the core. And then you have on the one side the physical quotient, the other side intelligent quotient and at other side it is emotional quotient, but all three are actually controlled and governed by spiritual quotient. It is not a kind of hierarchy, but it is a holistic thinking. If you say that uh, the, where is it operating? It is operating in the entire brain instead of looking at whether it is on the left or right. It is a holistic way of uh, looking at life. Now, the term was introduced by Dana Johar in about 1997, but it was more popularized by the book SQ, Connecting with Our Spiritual Intelligence. Now, in the book, Dana Johar talks about 12 basic traits which actually characterize uh, somebody who is having this spiritual quotient, but it is not only it is characterizing those people, but it also tells us if we want to develop our own SQ, what are the traits that we should be focusing on. Let us look at these 12 traits and then think about them. The first one uh, uh, she points out is field independence. Field independence means standing against the crowd and having one's own convictions. Whatever the person does he is not affected, afraid by what somebody else will say. Is It is not like I do not care what you say, it does not matter to me whatever you say, because I am independent, I am controlled and governed by my own inner quotes and then it, it has nothing to do what you people have in your mind field independence. The second uh, uh, trait that she points out is humility, humbleness, having the sense of being a player in a larger drama of one's true place in the world. Like I am not the one who has conquered the world, but I am a very small part and parcel of the world and then I am part of this chain of relationships and then the realization that I am not so big, but I am a very tiny part, but despite tiny I am still significant. So, that kind of humbleness and then the tendency to ask fundamental why questions, who am I, why am I here, what am I doing, what is my purpose. 
am I living according to the purpose or the potentialities for which I am designed or am I performing lower? What am I doing? Where am I going? So, they keep asking these questions and there is this needing to understand things and get to the bottom of them. Why things are like this? Ability to reframe, standing back from a situation or a problem and seeing the bigger picture or wider context. Often the normal individuals uh, or those who lack in SQ, they are emotionally bogged down in a situation, they are so stressed out, but then once they develop this SQ, they are able to reframe in the sense that they are able to separate themselves from the situation and then they are able to look at it from a distance and they are able to arrive at a logical and a emotional and spiritual solution that is amicable for all of the people who are concerned. Positive use of adversity, learning and growing from mistakes, setbacks and suffering. So, failure will not deter them, but then in fact any kind of adversity, any kind of failure that comes in their life, they will use that as a kind of getting back, not get affected by any setback. Sense of vocation, this is a very important trait. They do not do a job just for the sake of getting some money. Anything that they, they do, they are fully committed, fully involved in it and then they do it with this sense of occasion, feeling called upon to serve, to give something back. They feel that uh, it is a privilege to work with somebody, work for someone. It is a privilege, it is an honor to be there and then they feel committed and they feel like giving back. So, they do not look at their watch and work, but then they work with so much passion, they forget looking at their watch. What are the other six qualities? Self-awareness. In fact, Maslow also talks about this, Daniel Goldman also talks about this self-awareness. Knowing what I believe in and value and what deeply motivates me. So, at the beginning of the previous lecture also I was asking you, just try to identify what is it that deeply motivates you and what is it that makes you feel lazy, make you feel very uninspired, what are, what are the things that is driving and what are the things that is pulling you down. So, that is self-awareness. The next trait that she talks about is spontaneity. What is it? Living in and being responsive to the moment. They do not live in the past they do not get bogged down by the past. They do not think about future so that they are very anxious and stressed. They live in the present. They live in each moment and they are very spontaneously related to that. So, they, they do not have any kind of stress. The next quality that she talks about is acting from principles and deep beliefs and living accordingly. This what she calls as being vision and value led. So, being vision and value led is that already having this vision and then they are guided from their own values. As I said, it is close to the uh, previous discussion that we had. They have their own inner core and then they have the vision. So, they are not concerned about what others will tell about uh, what they do, what, how they perform. Holism, holism is seeing larger patterns, relationships and connections having a sense of belonging. Instead of seeing things by parts, they try to see the whole picture, the complete connectedness. Compassion, having the quality of feeling with and deep empathy. Uh, somebody asked, when do you get real happiness. And then if you ask such a question to uh, this uh, people with uh, spiritual quotient, they know the answer already because they know that only when you are compassionate for somebody, compassionate with somebody, you get happiness. Which means, when you try to do something for someone, so in doing that and in realizing that you are able to fulfill your own goals of being able to do something for someone your inner joy is uh, uh, fully realized. Last but not the least, she says that celebration of diversity. Now, 
what do these people do? They are not prejudiced, conditioned by narrow minded thinking in terms of uh, say race or color or caste or religion or nationality or any kind of boundaries. They value other people for the differences, not despise them. In the sense, even if other people are different, they are able to appreciate, they are able to respect the differences. Just because somebody is different from me, somebody is speaking a different language, eating a different kind of food, talking to different kind of people, it does not make me hate the person, it does not make me ridicule the person. The person who is high SQ, in fact, celebrates this kind of diversity. Now, this week is ending with uh, this notion of uh, spiritual capital that you need to develop. And two concluding thoughts about spiritual capital, spiritual wealth, spiritual intelligence coming from again Dana Johar. Uh, she was asked in an interview to simply put in very easy manner, what is spiritual intelligence? So, she said in this manner, she said, I now see spiritual intelligence as emerging from our most basic and primary need for an experience of deep meaning, deep meaning, essential purpose and our most significant values and how these lead to a deeper, wiser, more questioning life and affect our decisions and experiences. So, seeking a deep meaning, having an essential purpose and most significant values and how these lead to a deeper, wiser and more questioning life and affect our decisions and experience. Before I conclude, just want to tell you that this week is going to end and this is the last lecture for this week. There will be a quiz. So, just go through the lessons once again and then get ready for the quiz. And as you understand that I am just going to conclude, I just want you to think this thought and then leave you uh, for the end of this week. And then this is something that you should have in mind because this is one guiding principle that we are going to have for the course throughout. This is again from Dana Johar. She says in the book Spiritual Capital, uh, when I say this, you can, if interested, get the book, procure the book, read it. But for the sake of quiz, whatever we have discussed, that is enough. Okay. Well, if you just go through the video lectures, all the lectures are self-sufficient and you do not have to buy any notes or any book to read this. It is only on your own interest, only in terms of developing yourself. Whatever extra books that I am suggesting, you can buy and go through. Now, let us uh, go to the final thought and then I leave you with that. To become better, deeper, more spiritually intelligent people, we have to grow a dimension of our being that is sensitive to the deepest meanings of human life. What is she saying? We have to grow a dimension of our being. So, one part of our being, one side of our being which we generally neglect that has to be grown and what is it that is sensitive to the deepest meanings of human life, not by the superficial meaning of human life, the inner core, the deepest meaning of human life. A sensitivity if you like to Plato's famous triad of values, goodness, learn to appreciate goodness, be good, see the goodness in others, appeal to the goodness in others. Second, truth, resolve to stop telling lies and then resolve to seek truth, speak truth. And thirdly, she says, and beauty, appreciation, developing appreciation for things which are beauty, things which are orderly, things which are essentially good and truthful. We must live our lives as a vocation, as a calling to the service of those deepest values. To do that, we must act from the higher motivations that can drive human behavior. This is something Dana uh, Johar tells again and again that we can act from a higher motivation. And when we are able to act from a higher motivation, so many things which we think as 
mind boggling, stressful, they all lose their significance, they all lose their pressure uh, point on us. So, try to operate on this higher level, to do that we must act from the higher motivations that can drive human behavior and this is not a short term goal, but this is a long term project requiring tenacity and commitment. It is a long term project. So, the course is going to help you to commence that project. I am there as a kind of guide to take you along with you in the project, but you should know that it requires tenacity, strength of purpose, determination, willingness to take risk etcetera and commitment. Commitment not to the course or not to me, but commitment to yourself. So, wishing you success in this project that you have taken, uh, the first week is over and uh, using this project, develop yourself, develop soft skills and I am sure, so it will end with a kind of self-fulfilling experience that will gain you whatever you want in your life. Uh, thank you for being with me for this week and then we will start, come back again freshly with new thoughts on personality and soft skills in the next week. Thank you.